Hey guys, it's February 17th, 2023, and I have a ton of stuff for you guys today. So we have a socialites tutorial, and then we have a lot of like whips, future sew alongs, teases, um, several things I haven't talked about before that are going to be sew alongs in a couple of months. So I'm going to kind of jump right in and talk about the block we're doing today. Now this is socialites block 16, so we're kind of right in the middle. This is going to be our last six inch block now and we're going to talk about my finishing at the end of the block tutorial so because y'all have been waiting for that so this block is designed by corey yoder from coriander quilts it's called christmas star now this is probably the hardest or second hardest um, block in this quilt because it has lots of pieces and it's got so we've got half square triangles flying geese, flying geese with corner squares, and square and a square. So I'm going to show you the way that I make this block. There's no way I would make this block without paper. So I'm going to show you that. And then I did get a request to show half square triangles without paper. So I'm going to do that in a future video um, for everyone who's asking for that. But for this block, I just think the points... Um, Kind of have to match so this one was made in cinnamon and cream by uh, fig tree quilts this is dwell and i'm going to be making the same exact block and then this is basic gray nutmeg and it has a lot of colors it's got four colors in it this one is sweetwater fabric grays this is emma by Sherry and Chelsea. Blue Jean by Christopher Thompson. Isabella by Menikin Simpson. And then this one is Bunny Hill Fabric, The Flower Farm. So let's talk about fabric placement. So I would say you can do four different colors or two different colors in two different shades. Um, this one has, you know, a dark blue, a light blue, a pink, and a red. This has a light blue, a dark blue, and then two different grays. So you could do that. Now, I love the look of this one the best. Um, I do feel like if you're going to put stripes in this, it's going to complicate it. And, um, of course, that's what we're doing in my block is complicating it. Now this one looks really good because all of the stripes face outward. So that looks really good. And let's see, these stripes all just do this. These um, are all just random. And then these all just kind of go in a circle. Whereas these, so if you look at the stripes on these two, these all go the same direction these go in a circle so you can just think about what you want to do now if it was me i would probably just not put a stripe in it or put a stripe out here where it's really easy just because the block is already so hard if you want to make it advanced of course you can um, add more now i am going to be showing you the setting a little bit later but right now i wanted to talk about the designer of this block so this week's designer is Corey Yoder, and she is the designer for our charity quilt for 2023. Jelly Sticks, Bloomsville, Wooly Stars, Summer Weekend, and Sunny Flowers. And we are in, we are about to start her Sunny Patches block of the month, and I will be sewing along with that and giving tips, and she will have videos for every block. So I'm just sewing along. She's hosting the sew along, but, you know, I'm just sewing along for fun. Now I'm going to pop up her block, and it's so pretty. So um, she made her blocks with fabric from Spring Brook and Buttercup and Slate, so she combined two groups. The beautiful and intricate piecing is what gives the Christmas star its experienced difficulty level. She remembers piecing her first Christmas star block. She was new to piecing when she made her first one, and she remembers it turned out so pretty, but it made her a little crazy while she was piecing it. 
That was probably 20 years ago, and she's so thankful for new piecing techniques and tools to make piecing blocks like this so much simpler. And I totally agree. Now that, the size she's making, I'm not sure. I think she's making the three inch or the six inch size. Oh, she designed using the three inch size. So all of her blocks are three inch. And you can follow her on social media. So we're gonna jump into the block. And, oh, and her newest fabric, oh my gosh. Uh, we've already sold out of a uh, couple SKUs. So Sun Washed uh, just came in. This SKU on top actually has already sold out. So we can no longer cut half yard bundles because once one SKU sells out, I can't make any more. So if you didn't get the half yard bundle, I'm so sorry. And um, this is her newest collection, which I'm sure you're gonna see me sewing with a lot. So we're gonna take this pattern a little bit in more steps because I wanna talk in detail about the different techniques. So we're gonna start with half square triangles. So if you're making the um, three inch size, you would use half inch size, half inch finished. If you're doing the six inch size, you'll use one inch finished. And if you're making the larger size, you're gonna use one and a half inch finished. So what I've done already is I um, already put a fabric A and fabric D together. Now we wrote the instructions for the normal way. So um, if you don't have paper, you just follow this. If you wanna use paper, you would just cut a piece that's a square. Just make it a little bit bigger than your half square triangle paper. And then what I wanna point out to you is when if you're not using triangle paper, for example, and you want your stripes to go a certain way, you have to pay attention to how you cut it, like where the diagonal goes. And it's really complicated. And when I first started, I used to just do it one by one because I couldn't figure it out. Now this one, because we did it as an X, we're gonna have two going one, four going one way and four going the other way. Now, if the paper was all one way, I would have to flip. So that's kind of one of those things that comes with experience. And um, I basically sewed with a really tiny stitch length. I'm gonna cut it apart and then I'm gonna iron and show you how um, with the X method, you get four different directions. And some people, like you saw on the block, some people keep the stripes the same way. Some people don't. Of course, I keep mine whatever way I think looks best at the time. So, let's see. Trying not to move it. And then these don't have to be as accurate. Okay, so I'm gonna pull the paper off and I'm gonna iron them just so that you can see how you get four that go one direction and four that go another. Uh, Mary would like to know where I got my top. I got it at Talbot's. Oh, no, I didn't. It's Vince Camuto. I got it at Nordstrom. Will they reprint Corey Yoder's fabric? I doubt it. Now, that all depends on um, the owner of Moda decides that. I doubt it. And if they do, they would just reprint a certain SKUs. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the iron and I'm going to iron and show you how they come out. So if you just lay them all kind of flat, you can set the seam all at once.
and you'll see I'm stacking some and that just keeps the bottom ones just get flatter and flatter. They're pretty hot. So we have, we should have four that go one direction and four that go the other. And so just remember when you're doing your X's, if you have them going different directions, it's gonna be easier for you. Now I'm gonna show you my block and which one I need because I have already made two of these. So we have those two. And those two and I want all my stripes to go one way so I need two that go this way so that would be these two and then I'll set these aside you need eight but I, I cheated already or actually I'll save those for I'll pull those out in a minute and save those for my half square triangle bucket but what I'm gonna do here is press these open Now this block, I do feel like if you don't press open, it's going to be so bulky. Oh, Carrie Car said, did Michael, did Kim really see that Michael Jordan donated $10 million to make a wish? I absolutely did. In fact, my husband saw it. My husband um, is a big sports guy, so he showed me. And that's the largest donation that, uh, charity has ever received so that's awesome so now let's see do you think I have it right mm -hmm. okay so what I'm gonna do is just keep it I'm gonna put these right sides together and so and then just we'll, we'll finish this unit um, Kimberly did you ever do you ever nick the side of your rulers yes I do very um, now some of them are kind of wonky I do, but it, I usually don't replace them. But, but yeah, I do sometimes. Okay, so I'm gonna sew down here, press, and then sew the other way. to one side oh and then last night just to keep the conversation going I went to a concert it was Kevin's Christmas gift so I'm gonna pop up a picture and see who can guess who we went to see and y'all can guess and now I'm gonna clip this Put this right sides together. Kimberly, do you think us three inch or should trim our seams to one eighth rather than a quarter inch with this block? No. Okay, now I'm gonna sew this. And on stuff like this, sometimes the arrows will go the wrong way. It's okay. We're going to double check mine. But um, you should have plenty of fabric to remake if you need to. So I'm going to start setting the block out. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight stripes. 
stripe, 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 stripe. So it looks correct. Okay, so we've built the outside of the block right here. Now we're going to work on flying geese. So these two flying geese are the same size. So if you're making the um, small size, you have to kind of do it on your own. There isn't paper or you use a paper and trim down. If you are using the medium size, you can use the one by two flying geese. The large size, you can use one and a half by three flying geese. You can also do the four at a time method. You can do whatever method you want for flying geese. I'm gonna show you the paper. And again, feel free to do whatever you think works best. So, so I have taken my paper, we're gonna make two at a time, and I'm gonna cut around this outside just because it's a waste. Okay, so on the lid of the paper, it's gonna tell you, if you open it up, it's gonna tell you what size to make. So I've already cut those sizes, so I'm not gonna tell you the size because it's different on every single one. Um, oh my gosh, that's so funny. Shelly said, I thought Metallica, but I'm not sure Kimberly would be down with that. Oh, Kevin would be, but I would definitely not. I don't know that I would make it through that. So that's a no. Okay, right side up on the wrong side. Making sure that this fabric goes all the way around the outside lines. Bruce Springsteen, yep, you win. You win. Yeah, we went to see Bruce Springsteen. So um, that's probably the first time we've been to a concert in 10 years or something. I think I've seen him twice. I've seen Rush. I've seen a lot of bands that I don't know a thing about. I didn't know any of the music. So I've put a crease here. I'm gonna flip this over. Actually, I'm gonna keep it like this and I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut on all a size. Kimberly, I'm new to quilting. What thread do I use? I use Aurifil Color 2050 weight. Do I cross stitch the concert? No, I didn't. Kevin would probably kill me. No. I just pretend like I'm having fun. I mean, it was a really good concert. I don't know his music, so. The one song I knew, or I mean, I know some of them. He didn't play. And then I thought, should I ask Kevin if he played that? So, because I could be wrong. And anyway, he didn't play it. Okay, so here we've got two and three. So what I'm gonna do is put two right sides together here. And here that's how it's gonna be and I'm gonna stitch on this two line now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start out here and I'm gonna stitch all the way across and past because I don't want any ugly threads same thing here I'll start out here stitch all the way across and then stitch all the way across okay so let's go do that Now on here, I'm gonna do a really short stitch length. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is pull this paper two off because I want to be able to press open. Now that's going to make the last step harder, but I'll explain it. Did I rec did anyone recognize you? No, nobody ever recognizes me. Nobody ever recognizes me ever. Y'all think I'm important. I'm really not. I'm just important to my kids. I have a kid over here that's saying, yes, I'm important. We, what, we, our kids do not have school today, yesterday, or Monday, so one of them likes to go places with me. The other three are sound asleep. Okay, 
So I have that. Now I'm going to come back and cut this. Random question, do I ever stitch with flannels? Um, we are going to be doing three kits soon. One, one is going to be a pattern that comes in a baby boy and a baby girl color. One is going to be a shortcut quilt with a free pattern. And after we do that, we're going to do a blog post, or Marissa's going to do a blog post on tips with working with flannel. And we're going to work with Teresa to get tips. So, yes. Okay, so now, because I pulled that paper off, I'm going to just have an imaginary line. You can draw it if you want. So it's accurate. Do my quilts get soft again after washing? The starch makes it stiff. Yes, it will get soft. It'll make it, I mean, yeah, it will. Okay. So when you lay these out, you want to make sure this is pretty centered because if you did this, it obviously wouldn't work. So we'll sew these. And like I said, we're going to sew on that imaginary line all the way across. off all of it except right there and I'm going to show you how you trim down after now I'm going to press this then press open did I say the half square triangles were listed on the pattern you need with the complete the block with no I just give them to you in the video but we do have a half square triangle cheat sheet that you can use that makes it easy we do that because we don't want you to have to buy the paper I have people that think I just do the triangle paper to sell it. That's not why I do it. I do it because when I come on camera, I try to do exactly what I do at home. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna cut on this line. And that's how the flying geese starts. I'm gonna cut on this line now we're doing the six inch size, so I need my flying geese to be one and a half by two and a half. So what I'm going to do is, now I'm going to take the paper off here. And this may be too complicated for, for you, but this is what I do at home. So now I need one and a half, so I'm going to do one and a half with my ruler. And that should be exactly a quarter inch away from that top seam. And then I'm going to grab my two and a half inch square ruler. So same thing, one and a half. I always cut one side first. And then place your two and a half on here. And what you want to do is make sure you hit the corners of your geese. And even though I used the paper, it still came out exact. I just had to change a little bit to get it to press open. Now, you don't have to press open. That's just me. And I'm going to show you what little, a little thing you need to cut off. And so here, I'm just making sure that it just hits right there and right there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is on this little geese, you're going to see this little excess. So I'm going to clip it. Because that's just going to be excess that you don't need. So now I'm going to just place this, how it's going to go. like that. 
Now, so that's this step. Now, what we need to do for the one that goes here is we're going to start by doing the same exact step. You're going to make four of these. Now, I'm going to show you how to do one. So you need four of these. You do the exact same thing as here. But then what we need to do is place corner squares on the flying geese. So I'm going to draw a line on the wrong side. And then we can do two things here. You can either pin or glue. And um, I'm going to show you both. I'm going to do one with glue, one with pin, and we'll see which one comes out more accurate. But we're trying to go this direction. So when you're trying to pin on something this small and you don't want it to shift, I'm going to really put, I'm not going to just put one pin. I'm going to put three. I'm going to try to stitch directly on that line, as close as I can on that line. I'm going to draw it a little bit bigger. Do I ever use Tilda fabrics for a sew sampler box? I wish we could. That fabric is so expensive, there's no way we could. That would be the budget for the whole box, would just be the fabric. Okay, so stitch on this line. I'm going to trim a quarter inch away. And then we're going to go press this open and come back and add the other one. And I'm going to do glue. Christopher will take over FQS one day. He's shaking his head no. He says he doesn't want to be on camera today. And then thank you to the Bothola. She says, uh, hello, dear Kimberly. Oh, you're always here. Thank you so much. Okay, so we did that. Now I'm going to show you what you could do with glue. And I sometimes use glue. Sometimes I use pins. It just kind of depends what kind of mood I'm in. Sometimes I'll just change it up just so that I can keep myself going. So I'm just going to put three little dots. You want to make sure your dots are away from your seam, place it on there. And if you let that sit about maybe three minutes, it's gonna stick. Now, obviously you can move it, but it's gonna stick. And the key is to get it in the right spot. So now I'm going to stitch on the line. Trim a quarter inch away. And this, um, this is way too small to keep, so I would use glue because there's no way you can even keep that. Now, if I was doing a big piece where I could save pieces, I would not use the glue. Press open. Press to one side and then press open. And then what I am going to do is I'm going to kind of square it up. I want it to be exactly one and a half. And when you're doing it, you want to make sure your line on your ruler is a quarter inch away from both, both of the seams. I just want it to be exact. So you can see one of the sides was more accurate than the other. It looks like the glue was more accurate. Okay, so from here, you're going to make four of these.
and it's important that you make them go the, same, the right direction. So that's how they're gonna go. And you can see it's creating a star. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew this to this. So I'm gonna put that right sides together. Now, I'm gonna do this on top of here so maybe you can see it better. This and this, those have to line up on both ends. So I'm going to line them up and pin. Line them up and pin and then sew a quarter inch away using my, so I'm gonna change back to a quarter inch foot Will there be a new color coming out for Lori's book stand? Um, well, yes, but the yellow has to sell out first. So we only do a new color when um, the first one sells out. What's the difference between a cornerstone and a snowball corner? A cornerstone is usually just a square. Snowball corner is a square with four, four, four triangles on the outside. So when you do this, this should be a point this should be a quarter inch away, a quarter inch away, and a quarter inch away. Now, that might not be what happens today, and that's okay, it'll come with time. That's, that's why I said this one's a little bit harder. So we're gonna pretend I sewed these, because I did, over here. And that's why I love these design boards, so I don't make a mistake. So do you think it's in the right spot? Okay, so we've done tri triangle paper. Now you can do any method you want. I've done flying geese. You can do any method any method you want. Now we're gonna do the square and square. Bex from Texas, three inch blocks get seam allowance of a quarter inch. Yes, they do. I only use quarter inch. I never do anything else. Okay, so now for our square and a square paper. If you, that's gonna be this step. If you're doing the small block, you need one inch, the medium block, two inch, and the large block, three inch. So today we're doing the two inch size. And again, look on the lid, and that's gonna give you your cutting. So I'm going to crease this on all of these lines. Kimberly, where do you get the table and clear top insert for your Juki? Okay, let me think of the name of it. So steady. Okay, so this time I'm gonna use a glow stick and you wanna place this this way. Now what you can do, if you ever want your piece to, you wanted this fabric to go facing up, not diagonally, you would just cut a bigger square and then trim down, if that makes sense. So you can do a lot with fussy cutting here. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna trim each side. So we have you cut it a little bit bigger because it just helps with uh, not being short. When do I assemble my blocks? Sometimes. I sometimes catch the seams when sewing that are no longer open. Does it matter too much to a quilter? I don't, sometimes I fix them, sometimes I don't. Most of the time I fix them. Okay, so now this one I'm gonna do differently. I'm gonna show you how to do it with two seams to one side and two seams open, just to make it easier. So I'm gonna sew two and three, press, and then four and five. So right sides together, two, and then I'll do the other side.
Okay, I don't think that stitch length was short enough, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it again. Okay, so I'm gonna finger press these. And then press. Now if you wanted everything to press open, you would just do the same method I did earlier. Okay, just Jan Janine says, would you recommend the football shaped cordless Panasonic iron? I thought about the Aliso, but it's so heavy. I tried the Aliso out as my mom got one. I It gets a lot of good reviews. And we've had a lot of people over the years come and film and use that one. I haven't used it. Okay, so now I go back and do that same thing with four and five. Four and five. Okay, Joanne says, is the screw for the Juki presser foot standard or aftermarket? My Janome requires a screwdriver to change the feet. Drives me nuts. Um, I, it just came with the machine, so I don't know. But I just kind of, I think after you use it a while, you eventually can do it with your hand. So this one should be two and a half. Now, you don't have to even, I'm just gonna put a two and a half inch square ruler. It makes it easier, put on those lines, or you just cut on the lines. Well, hopefully that doesn't move. Okay, so then you pull the paper off. What size half square triangle paper is moved, used the most? Uh, two inch finished. Two and a half is second. How do you fold, why do I fold the foundation paper first before stitching? So I fold it back so on the front I can see a line visually and it just helps me. Okay, so now if you want, these two can be pressed open because they're your last two seams. So we'll do that real quick. And these you can't press open because you've sewn over them. So this is kind of like a in the middle method. And then there you go. Okay, so I'm not gonna assemble the block. I'm just gonna talk through what to do. So, when you put these together, this seam right here and this seam should touch. This seam and this seam should touch. And so on and so forth. So you put it right sides together. And to pin, what I do is I do my little polka pin. So I put the pin right in that seam where the point is, and then put the seam where this point is, get it nice and flat, and pin. And then you would do the same thing here. Put your pin right in that point. You could also eyeball it. And getting the pin to sit straight up kind of helps. And so you just sew the block like we have done a million times. And then 
this is what your beautiful block looks like. I'm going to throw in any questions you have on socialites. Now I'm going to talk about the new setting. So we have a setting already that we've talked about. That's for if you make all the blocks in three inch, six inch, or nine inch. Because on the socialites, I wanted it to be a tutorial where I showed all three sizes. We made a setting that Jocelyn designed for you guys who are sewing along. So you need eight, three inch, eight, six inch, and eight, nine inch. So this is a completely free pattern. It's on our website and it's called Kimberly's Finishing Pattern. Now, I do not have the SKUs picked, so I'm not gonna give you any SKUs or anything because I have not gotten that far. So basically, when I sew mine together, if you've sewn exactly like me, you'll have this finishing, or you can use the other finishings that are free, or I'm sure some of the other designers will be doing free settings. And, um, so we're just assuming I'm gonna use a pink and a navy, but that might change. This is just kind of a starting guide. So that's now available. And then, let's see, I'm gonna answer any questions. Sharon asks, so when using paper, you put it back of fabric to back of paper, yes. And then we do have an announcement next two weeks will be premiere videos. I've already recorded them because I'm gonna be out of town both weeks. So, um, but I'm still in those videos still, it's still recorded the same way with all my updates and everything else. Um, make sure you put any questions you have in about socialites. We're gonna take a quick break, reset the table, and we will be right back.
guys uh, for sticking with us. So now I'm going to kind of show you some new sew alongs, new patterns, mysteries, all kinds of new stuff. So it's really exciting because I have a lot of new stuff to show you today. And um, I'm going to hold all the questions and answer them all at the end because I feel like I do a better job when I do that. So we're going to start with something we just loaded. We've been working on this forever. So this is a brand new pattern by Lori Holt that we published called Home Again. And it's something that Lori and I came up with. Well, she came up with. I named it but the last time I was with her. So... It's really exciting because there's a lot to it and um, we really made it so that it is very customizable to everyone. So first I wanted to start with, there are nine colorways. We put together a kit for the red only. And the red kit has a 108 backing and three fabrics. But I wanna talk in detail about this pattern because if you like this concept, it's something that Lori can do in the future. And it's something I haven't really seen done in a while. So this is a two color quilt. And what we've done is there are, there's a red colorway, tea rose colorway, pumpkin colorway, daisy, alpine, teal, denim, plum, and raisin. I'm gonna show you the actual blocks in a second. And what we did is we have cutting instructions for background blocks, sashing, binding. And it has, so if you're doing the red, you would follow this, etc. So we've given you all the info. Now I'm gonna skip the instructions, but we have gone into detail. So, so obviously the red is right here. So the T rows, we've gone into detail. We list the backgrounds, you need three colors, the background and then the two fabrics that are used in the blocks. One of those is repeated in the binding. So we have everything listed. So if you want to make it exactly like Lori colored, which she spent a lot of time on this, there are nine colorways, all the details in the pattern at the back. Now also on the back cover, we have also made it easy for you if you want to look at the back cover. It's in both places. And so this is really fun. And then uh, she's using a wide backing on the red. And if you want to make this using the uh, triangle paper, the flying geese paper, you can use the three by six paper. But if you want to do it Lori's method, that's how we wrote it because that's how Lori makes hers is four at a time. So with nine different colorway options, your personal palette will fit comfortably inside this color box of a quilt. And um, we are going to be having a sew along this spring. The quilt along details are gonna be released soon, but the dates I can tell you are April 4th to May 2nd. Now I haven't decided what colorway I'm gonna do, so we'll have to wait and see what I decide. Now the paper is available, either PDF or paper. We have made a change to where now we are offering our It's So Emma PDFs at the same time as our paper. And we have the kit only in the red. Now I'm gonna show you the blocks and talk about the quilt also. So the quilt is really large. We're gonna show it to you in a second. And it finishes at 74 by 95. So here's the red. T rose. And all of these that Lori picked from are different collections. So she mixed together B backgrounds, B cross stitch, B ginghams, calico, prairie, and prim. This is pumpkin. It's definitely a beginner friendly pattern and it, like I said, is written for the four flying geese at a time. It's a no waste flying geese method. Now, if you're gonna use the flying geese paper that we sell, you would need to order extra yardage because it uses more. The sew along will be five weeks total. We're gonna do one row a week and then one week we'll be finishing. This is Alpine. Sorry, I forgot to say this is Daisy. T 
teal. Denim. And what I love about this is Lori has taken out all of the thinking. You, uh, you just have to, it all matches already. I'm gonna show them all together in a second, but this is uh, plum, which is great for everyone who loves purple. And then this is raisin, so this is the darkest one. So I'm gonna kind of lay them out just so you can see them, and then we'll then we'll show you the quilt and how big it is. Now the block size, can you look up the block size? I forgot. Eighteen inches, so eighteen and a half. Sorry, I just dropped them. And Teresa made all of these. Now we also have another set that Lori has, and she's going to show them on her YouTube channel also, and she'll talk about her inspiration for them. So one idea that I have now, I love the pink. So if I was going to pick a colorway to sew. My number one choice would be pink, my number two would be red, and my number three would be denim. The one thing I've noticed is I have a lot of red and white quilts, like a lot. I also think orange would be cool for uh, Halloween, fall. But what I was thinking is there are nine blocks here, and if I just did it as a rainbow, it would be a square quilt, which I don't think would look that great. So I'm thinking I might do something where I do a table runner just straight across. Uh, maybe I do a smaller quilt. I have not decided, but I will be sewing along. And what's great is I already have one block already sewn. So whatever I end up doing, I will just have to do one less. Um, or I could do different projects for different seasons. One thing I did think about doing is uh for example like just taking this having a long arm quilter quilt it and turn all of these into pillows and um you know obviously i don't i don't i don't decorate in purple ever so that could be a gift for somebody this would definitely not match my house it might match one of my boys rooms which which color is your favorite christopher do you like this one he's not answering this would look good in his room. So I'm kind of thinking of doing these and pillows. And maybe what we could do is have Teresa put them in pillows. Let me see. See, I'm kind of deciding on the spot. We could have her do pillows and we could do a little tutorial on our blog on how to do it. So these colors would definitely work in my house. I'm not sure about that one, but I think that would work. So that's probably what I'll do. I'll probably turn these five into pillows. So there, I just decided what I'm gonna do. And what we'll probably do is have a long arm quilter just quilt them all in the same pantograph. And then on the back, what I'll do, cause it's gonna be the inside of the pillow is I'll just get like a, a white Bella or a white confetti cotton and just quilt it. I could even do a tutorial on the channel if y'all wanted of how to turn it into a pillow, but I know that I would use these in my house. Um, Kevin always complains that we have too many pillows. So, hey, let's just add to the pillows. It makes it great because I love pillows. So, oh, now, okay, so the blocks were made by Teresa. I'm gonna set these aside because these, these are the ones I'm gonna make. I'm gonna show you the quilt. So it's pretty big, it's 74 by 95. Angel pieced this one. Joanna Marsh quilted it. And then I'll show it to you on the table. I'll show you the front and the back.
And what I love, okay, so one thing that I love, obviously I love everything Lori, um, but I like the simplicity of this. When I think about what are the kind of quilt blocks that I like, I like stars, I like things that have just kind of like a burst. And so this is so awesome. So I'm hoping that you guys love the concept of this because I'm thinking this could be a series. Like we could move on and do more 18 inch blocks and um, eventually we could do a sampler with it. And the navy blue is called denim and that's the color she uses on, um, that's how she calls it. Now I'm gonna show you the corner that Angel put the, it's probably that one, the last one. Yes, uh, wait, hold on. There's a label on here I wanna show you. It's somewhere. Hold on. Yeah, there is, I saw it yesterday. Hold on, I swear yesterday I saw a label that Angel did because it has her name on it. Where did it go? Okay, well, there we go. I'm losing my mind, I can't remember anything, and I guess there's not a label. But there you go, that's a 108 backing. Would it fit a queen size? Let's see, it's, no, it's 74 by, what? 95, and a quilt is 100. So yeah, it wouldn't fit, but you could always just make it bigger by adding. Andrea says she loves a red and white quilt, so thank you, and um, we'll have fun with that. So that again was home again, so excited about that. And what I really love about that is, Lori and I, um, it's like a collaboration. She designed it, of course, and I named it. So that's always fun. And the background fabric is different on every single block, and that's all listed in the pattern. And um, if you wanted to use the flying geese paper, I would order one to two yards more on both of the background and the fabric used in the flying geese. Okay, so Haunted Halloween, every year at Fat Quarter Shop, we do a mystery quilt along. We're gonna have more details closer to May, but we actually just got this back from the quilter. This year, Jocelyn designed with Halloween fabric by Urban Chicks. It's 31 by 32, and um, starting in June, cross our fingers, if the fabric arrives on time, we are going to release weekly video tutorials on YouTube with a free block pattern right here on the Haunted Halloween Sew Along page. Now, um, what we're doing right now is we're pre-selling the kit. So if you're interested, you can buy the kit now, and then the Sew Along will start in June if the fabric arrives in time. And even if it arrives late, we're still gonna have the video tutorials. Now this one is, has a lot of pieces. And so it's not gonna be every single step in the video because the video would be literally eight hours. But it's still very intermediate beginner friendly. So this is a sneak peek called Haunted Halloween that I haven't been able to show you before. Notice they put clips so I couldn't accidentally unroll it more. And then this is something that I have been working with Joanna from Fig Tree Quilts on for quite a while. So um, she has this collection coming out called Fruit Cocktail. I'm already sewing the triangles on a roll quilt with it. And I think I sewed some scrap blocks from it. Um, I've been sewing with it quite a while. But she has a brand new book coming out called Fruit Salad. And it's being printed right now and it has a uh, eight quilts and there are eight different fruit i believe so what she's doing for us is she's going to give us a free runner setting to use with the book and we'll be hosting that she will be hosting the sew along we'll be sewing along and what you're going to need is the fat quarter bundle and then you're going to need the setting which we will give you later fabric requirements will come later she actually uh, just finalized the quilt design so more details will come when the fabric arrives so if you're interested and if you've already pre-bought the fruit salad fat quarter bundle you're in luck because you you already will have um, what you need now what we're going to have we will have a little finishing kit 
that's just going to be like the sashing and stuff, but um, more details to come later. So those are our sneak peeks. Now we'll move on to free sew-alongs. This is the Riley Blake block challenge, block six. And this one is called Jack in the Box by Sandy Gervais. And I am using Calico. And this one's going to go all the way through Mar May 23rd. And there is a new block pattern every Tuesday, except the last Tuesday of each month on the Riley Blake Designs block. Lori um, designed a finishing setting for a table runner that's going to be 27 by 93. She will release the pattern towards the end of this sew along and we are both uh, making the exact same quilt which makes it easy because she colors it and all I have to do is sew it. So what I wanted to show you on this one, what I did is I used H200 for all of these squares right here. What you could do, you could always turn this into flying geese and you could always turn this into start with a rectangle and do corner squares. So anytime you see a pattern, you can always change it up and you'll see that I have on some, but I love half square triangles. So I just kept those there. And then I don't know why, but I made all of these go the same direction. Usually I wouldn't have been that OCD. I can't believe I just said that, but um, I made all of these baskets go the same way. And these blocks are really unique because they finish at 10 inches. And keep throwing in your questions, I am gonna answer them. The next quilt that's a sew along is a free setting that we have at Fat Quarter Shop that Lori designed. You just need the book. So the book is not free. And this week's block is called Applesauce. And um, Lori did a video called Sew Your Stash Series Number 30, Applesauce Quilt Block Tutorial. So um, she released it this week. So check that out and that's gonna give be where you get all your tips. Now on this one, when I pieced it, I pieced it exactly as shown. Piece some open, some to one side. And what I did is I cut these outside borders a quarter inch bigger. And then it finishes at 11 and a half. And so I just used 11 and a half inch ruler and trimmed around. So it's always fun when you have a block that's kind of, you know, you're going to lose seams in here. You can make up for it by making your borders bigger and cutting down. So that scrappiness is happiness. The next sew along is our Jolly Bar, Jolly Bar for Quilt Along. So we, of course, have the free setting. You just have to buy the book. It's a low price book. And I'm going to show you this week's blocks. This block is huge. So this one started January 19th and is going through March 16th. So this is a huge block. The quilt's going to be 66 by 84. And this one I used a Bella Solid, and I'm using Simply Delightful. And let's see, my tips for this week are, I just followed the pattern, and I pressed some open and some to one side. So that's the bigger block, and that block is 27 inches square. And then the smaller block for this week is called Stardust, and it's nine inches square. And you can just do this as a flying geese or, you know, you could do uh, corner squares, whichever way you wanna do it. So this is, these are my blocks. I'm gonna show you some sample maker blocks. Crystal made these, this is uh, Blue de France by French General. I want to make sure, oh, and then this is the um, French General Solids. This is Sun Washed by Corey Yoder, and Nova uh, made this one. 
And then here she just used, uh, Nova used the same color on the, most, on the Stardust. And this is a brand new white on white. I'm gonna actually show you the bolt now because it's awesome and it's part of our what's new section. I love it. I'm gonna buy a bolt of it. Um, bless you. Oh, this is simply delightful. Oh, okay, sorry. Well, we still have this. It's awesome too. I think we might've shown it a different week, but this is an awesome white on white. And on here, you can see she's kind of got the same colors going. And then this is Filigree by Zen Chic. And Riley stitched these. And I just kind of wanted to point out, um, we do listen to feedback. And I know you guys tell me I always sew with the same designers, always do the same thing. And I sew what I love. I will never not be true to myself. I will never not be true to what I love. And that's the best way you can be successful in life. And that's why we're asking sample makers so that we can add more variety. But I will never change who I am or what I do. And then Stronger Together, I'm so excited. We have raised um, $14,916 for UNCF, which is so awesome. And I'm going to show you this week's blocks. And this is the one, this is a great quilt for beginners to learn about doing one block at a time because it's all about color placement. And then this week's uh, biography is on Charles Young. You're gonna make um, a lot of blocks, let me show them to you. There was one thing that I did notice that I wanted to point out Now on this collection that we use, this happens to be a stripe. So um, you could pay attention to the way the stripes go or not. That's totally up to you what you want to do. So these are the blocks from this week. And my best advice is um, just one block at a time and your quilt's going to be beautiful. And then next week, I think we'll get to show it to you like all soon. Or no, I can't remember, but we're getting, we're getting towards the end, but it's really beautiful. And it's designed by Michelle Ramsey. Okay, so this quilt I made originally last year a quilt called Brick House. It's a free pattern at Fat Quarter Shop. And I donated it. Um, I sold it on eBay and all the proceeds went to Uvalde. So I wanted one, so I made another one. So this is my new one. I'm going to show it to you up close. I'll put it on the table. So this is exciting because I really wanted to have one that was all my own. So when I made this, um, I kind of showed it to you as I went, but I did one collection per block, completely free pattern. I used a different background within each block, but one background for here, if that makes sense. So you can see this one's a little bit creamier. And on this one, Maggie Honeyman quilted it. And my favorite pantograph of all time is Baptist fan, so why not put it on this quilt? So I'm gonna kind of move it up and then I'm gonna show you the backing too. Now, what my plan is, so now that I've made a brick house that's mine, that I can keep, I'm gonna move and I'm gonna be making a bitty brick house with the same concept of this as one collection per block. Different backgrounds each block one background here. So that's gonna be next. And then after that, I'm gonna make the big brick house. And so you can see there are 16 blocks, 16 designers, 
or some might be duplicated. And I kind of just did each row the same color because that is the way my mind works. But you can do it like the pattern is written where it's scrappy. So we're gonna turn it over and I'm gonna show you the back. So on the back, I actually, when I made it, I made 13 blocks. So I hate to say this, but I put my least favorite on the back. So it um, doesn't mean it's my least favorite designer. I just was like, you know what, let me just put this on the back. And then in here, I just made, um, I made a little door. Not a door, a window with my name. And let's see, this is a Bonnie and Camille fabric. And then this is a really old Bonnie and Camille fabric I had in my stash. So we don't even have this anymore. So I do try to pull bindings from my stash. I do like to do stripes. Um, so we don't have this one, I know that. For our solid club, Carrie has been working really hard on this. And for our solid club for 2023, she's promoting the Sandpiper It's So Emma pattern. And she has colored each of the months. This is a free layout you can get at Fat Quarter Shop. You do need the pattern. And of course, if you're in the solid club, you do not have to sew this. This is just so that we can give you inspiration if you want to actually turn what you get each month into a quilt. And so Carrie made this. It's going to finish at 56 by 85. And um, so if you sign up now, you'll get Goldfinch. Now, if you wanted January, January's Blue Jay, February's Hummingbird, you would have to buy those online. We have our leftovers online. And then this is Essex Yarn Dyed Flax Linen, E064 1143. And then um, if you sign up today, this is the one you'll get. So pretty. And of course, we're gonna show it every month. And Carrie's making all the blocks herself. She colored them, she did everything on this. And she named the bird, she did everything. So um, shout out to her for doing all of that. And we will be showing progress every month on what she's doing. And then we will even show it once it's complete. And if you like this concept, we'll just keep doing it every year. Because I do feel like if we give you some inspiration for what to do with it, you're more likely to actually use the fabric. So on Tuesday on this YouTube channel, we released a video called Scared to Go Scrappy. Start with fabric, pick fabrics with me for a scrappy quilt. I'm gonna just show you my blocks and you can refer to that video. And I saw a lot of comments that said, this isn't really scrappy because scrappy is throwing it all together. And I totally agree. This is what I would call planned scrappy. So I probably should have said that in the video, but this is also one way that I think you can just start doing scrappy is to start easy. And then as you get a hang of it, you can become um, more advanced and use more colors. So, and maybe this would be called like Kimberly Scrappy. This is just kind of what I do. And I'm hoping to make some more blocks this weekend. I am using Thimble Blossoms and I would love for you to check out that video. And just uh, remember, um, I just kind of come up with what I think is good. I know it's not 100% scrappy. It's not as good as Lori's. It's not as scrappy as Lori's, that's okay. And I am trying to do an even number of colors. So um, super excited. And one thing I already have done is I've already done all the spool tops. So um, that'll be fun. And then when I get all the blocks done, I think you need 64. I'm going to do a reel where I lay out all the blocks. So you can kind of see how I plan that. And then uh, next week on YouTube, for our members, we will be releasing a video on the Jelly Glaze Table Runner. Now this, if you're not a member, is we already have a video that we posted three years ago showing the block. What I did for members is I talked about taking an old pattern, recoloring it, and just adding 
um, some borders so that it would fit my table. And this is a great beginner pattern. This would make a great baby gift, housewarming gift. And also I do talk about how the original pattern was written for scrappy binding and how I changed the math to get it to work for something smaller. So if you are a YouTube member, I would love for you to check that out. And I want to show you one thing. Here's my label. It's just a, a little leftovers uh, from the jelly rolls, the leftover strips of the jelly rolls with my label in the center. But I want to show you at my house to store my quilts. This is what I do. I try to roll them up as tight as I can. And I have buckets. And this, when I take this home today, this will just go in my bucket. And in that bucket, you'll just see pops of color. And then I open it and display it when it's that season. So. Now I will show you flash sale. And then I'm going to show you what's new. And then I'm going to answer questions. So if y'all have questions, throw them in there. So this is Starry layer cake and um this is on flash sale today really cute my son is running behind me while the camera's on the top camera to see if he can trick y'all he's so funny lots of colors now i did want to tell you this was the question we sometimes get ruby star society it's all 10 inch squares but they roll it different because they want to package it different so it's the same as a layer cake it's just rolled and then our other flash sales are Midnight Magic 2 Mini Charms, the Lavender and Line Dreamers pattern, and then a label set. I'll show you the labels. And there is a limit on the Mini Charms. So these you could put in the binding of your quilt, either that way or this way, and there's white and black. And then I'm going to show you some new things. This is a brand new Calico Snails pattern from uh, Lori Holt. So Riley Blake published the pattern. They packaged it in this really cute, um, it's like a mason jar. So it's got the pattern and all the fabric you need to make it. The table runner finishes at 32 by 57. And then also by Lori is this boxed kit it's called Calico Birds Quilt Kit. And this is the actual pattern. It uses a uh, calico layer cake and really cute. It's all piece though, no applique. And these two both come packaged just like this. next one is the quilt kit that we put together at Fat Quarter Shop. So we actually took the new Porch Swing collection and uh, we always work with Pat Sloan by taking existing patterns and color them. So this is her newest collection and we took the Fat Quarter style book and colored sparklets in it. So always remember you can pull out a book and this is the cover and it's Bonnie Camille fabric. Looks just as great and Pat Sloan fabric. So I'm going to show you this one and then I'm going to show you her half yard bundle. And it's got lots of different colors. And then the back. I'm not sure if our backing set is the same. And then um, this is the fabric collection. So we offer Pat, all of Pat's collections when they come out, we give, we always offer hers in a half yard and a fat quarter bundle. Now, speaking of new whites, there are two new whites I love. This one is Simply Delightful and it has little rings. It's gonna be really hard to see. There we go. So you can kind of see it. 
So this one is 37644-31. And then I also like the new sun wash, white on white. Okay, so we also, like I talked about, kind of talking about upcoming sew-alongs. In the summer, we are going to do a summer picnic quilt-along with Susan Aki's brand new book, Summer Memories. And this is a starter bundle. So she picked out all of these fabrics and she mixed and matched different designers. And so I'm gonna actually take this bundle home, starch it, and be ready for my sew-along. More about this sew-along will come in the summer. And the Blue de France we've been showing you in Crystal's blocks for the Jolly Bar Sew Along, and this just came in. And I will apologize, some of the yardage is already sold out. It is, um, we are reordering it from Moda. So if a SKU is sold out, we're reordering it if they have it in stock. This one kind of, um, this one kind of sold faster than we expected. We received a new collection called Eden. Gabriel Neal Designs is the designer, and it has a lot of colors from hot pink, orange, olive green, blue, yellow, a mustardy yellow, pink, lots of colors. So this would be really fun for something scrappy. <coughs> now this one, I actually had to recut more this morning. This is Vintage Flora by Kimberbell Designs. This one's a little bit different for her. I'm actually gonna open it and show it to you because it is different. I'm gonna actually show you. Kimber Bell is one of our best-selling designers, actually. And this time, the reason I'm showing it to you is she went with a different color palette. And so I wanted you to be able to see it in person. And Maywood usually keeps the Kimberbell collections in stock and reorderable for a little bit of time. So we do keep them on order as long as we can. So just a different colorway. I love this, love that. It's little uh, hexagons and it also comes in this gray. These would be great backgrounds. And this is also a little bit bigger for collection wise as a Kimberbell. This is a little bit larger than normal. So something different, hopefully it appeals to some of you. It's selling really good. I will say we had to cut more of this one and then the next one also this morning before I did the live stream. Before I walked up the stairs and spilt my full iced tea everywhere on top of myself and on my cross stitch because I am having a great morning. It's because I didn't, I didn't, um, I went to bed late. Kevin was like in the middle of the concert, like, oh, it's your bedtime. I'm like, yes, I know I'm old. And then we got a new collection by Laundry Basket Quilts, which is Aditya Sitar. This one is basically, um, sometimes she does reds, sometimes she does blues. Now she's kind of doing backgrounds that have a base. So this one is a beige with a blue base. So all the little accents are blue and brown. It's called Seabreeze, Fat Quarter Bundle. And um, this, we, oh, Andover keeps her fabrics in stock for one year. So we keep that going for a full year. And then this one, this is Art Journal by Janet Wickerfresh. And we just loaded this. And several of the uh, prints, kind of in this range, have sold out, but we have already reordered them. And then, oh, I want to like talk a little bit about Kay Facet. So, Kay is a designer. He just celebrated his 85th birthday. He is a designer with Free Spirit. And when he comes out with collections, they usually have between 60 to 80 SKUs. So we have, as a company, we buy all of them by the yard. 
we keep them in stock um, for at least six months. And then after six months, if it's a good seller, we keep it. If it's not, we discontinue it. Because if not, we would this whole place would be all cave because he has a million SKUs. But what he does when he um, comes out with collections is he has yardage. He does bundles by color that he picks. He does charm packs, 10 inch squares, design rolls. So he has a lot of pre-cuts. So if you like K facet, um, and then the pre-cuts don't always go together. So like the fat quarter bundles might be a different colorway than the design rolls. So we got all of that in this week. And then I'm really excited about this. The sew-in interfacing that I've been using for my strip scrappy strings, I cut them smaller. But these are now 10 inch pre-cut squares so you don't have to buy the interface and cut it. You just, it's all pre-cut in here. So I'm gonna be taking this one home today. And I think what I'll do is after I finish this one, I'll probably just do a bigger, a bigger one. Okay, so now I'm gonna answer questions. I'm going to drink my new IC, and I'm going to answer questions. So the way I do it is uh, answer questions until they're all done. Lisa says, would you consider doing a video on pinning and sewing diagonal seams together? All different configurations. I struggle with getting those to match up perfectly. So if you could leave a comment on like, exactly what you mean we can look into it um i did a partial seam last week yes i know it's not a y seam sorry sometimes when i film i just forget words so um but yes if you can leave more detail i can look into that is there any way to enlarge the blocks to 12 inch without simply adding sashing if you can do the math but we did not write social lights at 12 inches. And the reason we didn't is there are so many 12 inch blocks already written. We want our free sew along to add something to your library that you might already have. And most of you probably don't have a library of three inch blocks. So we're trying to add something and keep you interested. Lisa and Greg, just curious, who influenced your passion for sewing and who do you learn from the most now? So I would say like my mom, my grandmothers, both of my grandmothers, um, one sewed, one crocheted, one had like a little craft business. Um, I would say who do I learn from most now would probably be Jocelyn who works here and works for me. I learn a lot from her. I tend to not watch other YouTubers because I don't ever want to accidentally copy someone. I, if anybody who works here knows, we don't copy we do our own thing we stay in our lane that's like a great advice for anyone um, in life basically but i don't i don't learn from anybody else because i don't want to accidentally do something somebody else did so that kind of limits me because i can't really watch other people but anyway jocelyn would be the answer how long will the Bonif Bountiful quilt box be available? Until it sells out. So we do still have charity quilts available. I haven't looked at inventory lately, but basically we order it at one time and then when they're gone, they're gone. The backing on the charity quilt, is that the same fabric that is no longer available? Yes. Are there still kits? Oh yes, I answered that. Michelle Green. Using the gingham is difficult to mass or do we have to worry about matching? No, don't worry about matching the gingham. I would just try to cut it straight. What, and with that, I would say just to cut it straight, just use the lines on your ruler. What backing fabric is that for home quilt of Lori's? So that uh, quilt, it's listed on the back of the pattern and you can click on that on our website. Would you guys ever do a tutorial on designing your own patterns? Well, we've been kind of thinking about doing a video on using electric quilt, that kind of thing. It's just a lot easier to say than it is to do. One thing that's my weakness is I don't do well with new things. I like to stay very, um, I like to do what I know how to do. So Jocelyn is working on trying to get me to do an electric quilt video. I'm just like so paranoid that it's gonna go bad or that I'm not gonna know what I'm doing, that I'm scared to do it, but that will definitely be coming once she gets me over the hump. 
Thank you to Sally's Rocks. Thank you for the inspiration. Cicely said, Kimberly, how did you decide to make your passion into your business? Was it a long-term goal or did you find a need? Um, so I would say, you know, I went to high school, um, went to college, didn't have any idea what I was going to do in college. I thought I wanted to be a teacher. I didn't know what I was doing. I was really lost as a young, I was very like immature when I went to college. Um, but I took some, one of my friends in college, um, he was like best friends with two girls that lived in the dorm, like two rows down. And he was like, oh, I'm going to take accounting. You should take accounting with me. His name is Keelan Latimer. I heard from him a couple years ago. He actually teaches in Austin and he actually told me he watched my videos and I haven't seen the guy in like years, but he told me, take an accounting class with me and, or, you know, something like that. And I took accounting. I really liked it. So I kind of just did that. I, um, took the CPA exam. I worked in accounting. I liked it. I think, you know, if I ever had to go back to it, I could definitely do it. Um, took the CPA exam, but then the economy kind of fell and I just thought, you know, let me just do something at home. I'll be a stay at home mom. Well, obviously that didn't work out. Um, so yeah, it kind of just, I'm kind of that kind of person. I just, if I want it done, I do it myself. I just do it. I just go, go, go. I don't stop. That's probably another one of my, I just go like, I don't stop. There's no stop to me and Kevin. Um, so if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it right. And so we built the company based on customer service and we can still stand behind that today. I love the controlled scrappy for me as well. Yay. Tamara says, are the blocks share? Can you turn the hearts, everything other direction for the table runner? So the blocks are square, correct? Yeah, they're square. They are square. They're 17 inches. So yes, you can rotate them. Yes. Hopefully I answered that right. Gazella, regarding the house quilt, do you really think a totally scrappy would look nice? Made one already the Kimberly way. Thank you so much from Sweden. Yes, I think it would be. It would just take a lot more time. But yeah, I think it would look good. And then we're going to end with Barry's wife. She gave us a super chat. Thank you so much. And then um, we're going to give away a three. This is a big giveaway. So basically three people are going to win a full kit and you won't get it until the kit comes in stock later. But basically we're giving away three reservations for this. And so um, I'll tell a little story before I ask the question. So I had, speaking of, I go all out. My daughter has been asking me to take her to Ole Miss to this dance camp for like six months. The only day we could fit it in, because there's three of them, and they're actually like auditions to try out for the Ole Miss dance team, if you're a senior. But you can go as many times as you want. She's a sophomore. She's been asking me to take her. Sunday, took her to Ole Miss in one day. I was gone from my house for 20 hours, so I missed the Super Bowl because I was on a plane. So my question today is, when you watch the Super Bowl, do you watch it for football, commercials, or the halftime show? And um, Christopher over here is going to be waiting to see what your answers are. And we hope all of you have a great weekend, and I will see you next week.